We have just witnessed one of the most historic moments of our generation, and I'm going to explain to you exactly why in this video. Elon Musk, the richest man in the world on record, has just officially taken over Twitter, a once woke leftist indoctrination camp and propaganda machine that has been used as a political weapon by tech giants over the last decade. We don't know what the full effects of this will be, but what we do know is that this is an enormous win for freedom and it's an absolute slap in the face for the thought police. Now it's been in the making for some time. We saw Elon Musk wanting to buy Twitter a few months ago. There was a bit of back and forth about what percentage of the accounts were bots, but eventually this has all been resolved and Elon has moved forward with the purchase of Twitter. As you would have seen, he's turned up to the Twitter HQ and assumed his position on the throne of the bird. Now, Elon said that he wanted to sack 75% of the staff straight up. And for me, that's not enough. He should be getting rid of more of them. We all know that Twitter is an enormously bloated bureaucracy. They're full of diversity and equity officers, people that are completely unnecessary in the workplace, and Elon will be rightfully swinging the ax. Now, this is not a sci-fi convention. This is a team of data analysts from Twitter being laid off and leaving the building in San Francisco. Musk also got rid of Twitter CEO Parag Agrawal, as well as Vijaya Gaddy, who you will remember went on Joe Rogan's podcast with Tim Pool and got absolutely dragged over the coals regarding the censorship that's been occurring on Twitter. Your platform restricts speech. Our platform promotes speech unless people violate our rules. And in a specific direction. In any direction. But Uncle, oh, I don't want to say his name, the guy who calls for death gets a suspension. The guy who insinuates death gets a permanent ban. But Tim, you're, you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. And I feel like you're doing it deliberately. It's not about one particular thing. It's about a pattern and practice of violating And you rules. have a pattern and practice of banning only one faction of people. I don't agree Quillette with that. recently you, published an article where they looked at 22 high-profile bannings from 2015 and found 21 of them were only on one side of the cultural debate. But I don't look at the political spectrum of people when I'm looking at their tweets. Right, you, you have a I Bias. Know who they are. You're biased and you're you're targeting specific individuals because your rules support this perspective. No. It, I it, don't agree with that. Well, so can you be clear though in, in like what rules support that perspective? Specifically the the easiest one is misgendering, right? Because that's so clearly ideological. If you ask a conservative what is misgendering, they'll say if someone is biologically male and you call them, you know, she <laughs> Uh, a biologically male and you call them a she, that's misgendering. That's a conservative okay. view. The, the, the progressive view is inverted. So now you actually have in your policies a, a rule against the conservative perspective. You remember that Twitter had the audacity to silence the sitting president of the United States, Donald Trump, at one stage. Characters such as Jordan Peterson, Dave Rubin, Libs of TikTok, the Babylon Bee, just to name a few, are other people who have also been kicked off the platform simply because they hold differing political views to those of the woke tech nerds at Twitter. Now, like I said before, this is a historic moment. And if Elon Musk does manage to put an end to the relentless censorship of conservative voices, on Twitter, then what we could be seeing is a renaissance in terms of public discussion online. Twitter is an enormously powerful and influential social media app and communication tool that plays an integral role in our public discourse. Whether it's a private company or not, it needs to be understood that freedom of speech is essential in the public forum, and this is the public forum. So censorship of speech due to one's ideological standing cannot be be tolerated. Jordan Peterson said something along the lines of there's no difference between being able to think and being able to speak. In order to be able to think, you have to be able to speak. And this reflects in the hero's journey as well. In order to become the hero, you have to be willing to be the fool. What do I mean by this? In order for your ideas and your worldview to be able to progress, you have to be able to put your ideas out into the public forum and have them criticized by the public and thrown back at you. I am, like so many others, a believer. Good ideas will usually be beat bad ideas. If you don't like the way that somebody thinks, then the best thing you can do is challenge them intellectually. Come up with a better idea than what they've got. And if you're so confident that you're right, then this shouldn't be an issue for you. But what we've been seeing with Twitter has been the silencing of opposing views. They've done everything that they can to try and control the narrative, which is impossible to do because the more you try and tell people how to think and what to say, the more disenfranchised people will become and ultimately seek alternative means of communication. If we're gonna be free thinkers and if we're going to engage in respectful discussion and debate to try and move our society forward, 
we have to be able to speak freely. Now, obviously the left has been melting down over this and there's been some great memes as well on Twitter. So let me share with you a few of my favorite here. Starting with Washington Post columnist, Taylor Lorenz. She said, it's like the gates of hell opened up on this site tonight. Well, I'll tell you what I think the gates of hell are, what Twitter was beforehand. Imagine walking into an office full of blue haired, septum pierced university graduates talking about their disdain for white people, Donald Trump and climate change. I would rather be castrated with paper cuts than have to endure one single day of that. Moving on now, here's another one where it says Elon Musk meets with Parag Agrawal and it's Elon Musk as the Joker and Parag as the villain saying, tell your men they work for me now. Here's a photo of Elon Musk talking to all of the Twitter employees and there's one girl that just looks saltier than an anchovy. She probably knows that the gig's up. And then we've got Elon Musk as, as Iron Man or something like that. I haven't seen any Avengers movies, but accurate it is indeed. And then this is my favorite one. Elon Musk at his first Twitter board meeting as Big Bird. Internet undefeated as usual with the memes. And last but not least, massive, massive day for freedom. It makes you think that with everything that's happening with people moving over to Rumble at the moment, and now Elon taking over Twitter, we could be seeing the tides turning before our eyes. People want to be free to communicate online, and it seems as though the dam is now bursting, and the tech nerds are being swept away by the deluge. Elon Musk's first tweet in office, the bird is free. Let's hope so, Elon.